And then back to what taqullaha. And this is important because, see, women is all about taqwa. That's why the chapter begins, it's all about taqwa. It's the whole foundation of the relationship between women and men is about taqwa. You see, because taqwa is about guarding yourself from what is going to harm you. And the thing that will harm you more than anything else on the Yom Qiyamah is dhulm, is oppression. Nothing will harm you like dhulm. The worst dhulm is towards Allah, which is shirk. I mean, you, you can't harm Allah, uh, you can't oppress Allah, but you can oppress His haq. You see, because Allah has a haq. And because of the status He's given the human being, He's given you the ability to even oppress His haq. Right? I mean, that's one of the biggest proofs that God exists is, is those who oppress his haq and they're still walking around. And that's a proof. So when any of you says, I don't believe in God, they're a proof that God exists. You see, just the fact that they're there saying, I don't believe in God, that's a proof that Allah exists. That's why they're a sign. Somebody who rejects Allah is a sign. From Allah, because Allah says that those who are arrogant, He won't let them see His signs. So for the believer, it's so clear. And when He hears the one rejecting, why is He rejecting? Because kibr is arrogance, and that's why He's it's taken away. He can't see it. So when He says, "Attaqullah uh, tasa'aluna," see when we ask, even in this culture, it's becoming less so. But people used to say, "For the for the sake of God." You know, for the love of God, you know, do this thing. That's what people used to say that. When they asked you something, they would say, for, the, for God's sake. You know, do this for God's sake. Because that's the highest moral appeal that you can make, is to, to ask somebody to do something for the sake of God. And that's the same with the Arab. The Arab said, unshiduka billah. You know, I'm asking you by God. Billah. Unshiduka billah. Alladhi tasa'aruna bihi wal arham. And also you ask the arham. Tasa'aluna bihi wal arham. And then also, because it's mansub, it's mansub ala attaqullah. So not, don't just have wiqaya, don't just protect yourself from things that harm you because of your stinting on the rights of Allah, what, what you owe to Allah. But also, which is also a haqq of Allah, but it's, it's a right of the womb itself. So have taqwa of the womb. In other words, fear the rahim. And there's a hadith in which the rahim spoke when Allah created everything. And the rahim is a reality. The womb is, I mean, this is, these are the, uh, the archetypes. Some of the scholars call it a'yana thabita, the source forms from which everything comes. Like milk is a, is a source form somewhere else. There's a perfect milk. And knowledge and everything. So the rahim has a source form. And in the hadith, and it's a sahih hadith in al-Bukhari. In the hadith it says that the, this, this source form, the womb that Allah has created, is mu'allaqa bil-arsh. It's actually connected to the throne of God. The womb. Connected to the throne of God. And the womb said to Allah, هَذَا مَقَامَ الْعَائِذْ بِكْ this is the maqam when those who seek refuge seek refuge in you. So this maqam, when, when all these created things were in the presence, the divine presence, the womb spoke and said, this is the maqam of those who seek refuge. And the, the womb wanted refuge from qati'ah, from being severed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, isn't it enough? Aren't you pleased that I have said, whoever severs you, I sever him. And whoever maintains your bond, I maintain a bond with him. And you reflect on that meaning. You see, now the secret of this, how does this begin? You're all from one nafs. So all of you have a bond. This is the womb that we all came from, is the womb of Hawa. Everybody walking around on the earth. 
came out of the same womb. And what we're being told is, is the womb has to be protected. The bond of the womb. In other words, all of you people walking around, your, your brothers and sisters, Benny Adam, Yayuhannes. So don't sever those bonds. Because those bonds are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one that made those bonds by making you from one source. One creative source, which is the womb, the rahim, which is rahmah. شَقَقْتُ إِسْمَ الرَّحْمِ مِنَ الرَّحْمِ مِنْ إِسْمِ الرَّحْمَانِ فَمَنْ قَطَعَهَا فَقَدْ قَطَعْتُهُ I have derived my, the womb's name from my name, Ar-Rahman. In other words, the womb is derived from his name, Ar-Rahman. Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Allah derived the womb's name in Arabic from his name, the merciful. Irhamu man fil ard, yarhamkum man fil sama. Have mercy on those in the earth, and Allah will have mercy on you. And mercy is folk. It's, it's from up, from below. That's where mercy comes from. Mercy is, is from up to down. It's not the other way around. Mercy is the mother with the child because the mother is stronger, has full consciousness, and can neglect. Do, she can leave a child. She can abandon a child. The mercy is in the weak, is showing. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said there's not a prophet that didn't take care of sheep. Why? To learn how to be merciful because the sheep are the weakest of domestic creatures. They're not intelligent at all. They'll just go wherever you take them. You lead them into the wolf's den and they'll follow. So le- mercy is towards those who are weaker than you. And this bond that Allah has made is a bond of Bani Adam. And this is, this is traditional tafsir. It's not my modern interpretation. This is traditional tafsir. Is it? لِأَنَّ الْكُلَّ أَخٌ مِنْ آدَمْ وَحَوَىٰ That's what uh, Barsawi says. لِأَنَّ الْكُلَّ أَخٌ مِنْ آدَمْ وَحَوَىٰ Everybody is a brother from Adam and Hawa. And this is the meaning of the hadith. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما لنفسي. None of you believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for his own soul. Imam Nawawi says, ويشمله الأخوة في الإنسانية. This includes the brotherhood of humanity from Adam and Hawa. But this haq is لا سيما المؤمنين. That's how they say. But especially believers because they have two haq. They have haq of teen and haq of deen. Right? Al-mu'minun lahum haqqani. Haq of deen wa haq of teen. Teen is the earth that bonds us. That we're bonded in earth. Because we're from the same earth and we're from the same womb. The womb represents the earth. I mean, it's the matrix. And this, the deen is from heaven. So when you meet a believer, you're bonded celestially and terrestrially. So each bond has a haq, the earthly bond and the heavenly bond. And that's why the believer is an aqrabun awla bin ma'ruf. See, it says those nearest to you are more worthy of your haq, your, the right that they have upon you. The nearest to you are the believers. It doesn't mean the others aren't near. But they're more distant relatives because they're from a different milla. So if you have a Jewish or a Christian or a Hindu or a Buddhist, they're from other millal. They're not from our milla. They're still brothers and sisters, but not in deen, in teen. You see, not in, in celestially, but terrestrially. And that's why you have to still maintain those bonds. And that's why if they don't oppress you, you don't oppress them. If they don't aggress on you, you don't aggress on them. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ in his relations, he had good relations with everybody. Everybody. Jews that came to him in Medina, there's many stories. He treated them good. He treated them well. He treated the Christians well when the Christians visited him. He treated ambassadors from other peoples well. He treated everybody well. And then he says, Inna Allah kan alaykum raqiba. You see, that's, that's the point. That's the whole reason 
that you have to be aware that these huquq that you are commanded to fulfill, they're being recorded, whether you're doing it or not. You see, you have responsibilities in the world, and one of the signs of the world is that they catch up with you. If you don't pay your bills, it's very uncomfortable, right? That it'll catch up with you. If you buy something and then don't pay for it, if you try to steal something, anything you do, it catches up with you sooner or later. And that's just dunya muraqaba. That's, a, that's the monitoring of the dunya, of this world. It's not, it's not divine monitoring. I mean, divine monitoring, that's the ultimate security system because there's no glitches. The angels don't make mistakes in their recording. There's no fudging, nothing like that. There's no forgery because the hands testify. So you can't say, I didn't do it because the hands said he's lying. He made us do it. You see, you say, I didn't kill him. No. He made us do it. We didn't want to do it. They don't want to do it. You see, they don't want to steal. A hand does not want to steal. It doesn't, I guarantee you, the hand does not want to steal. Because the hand knows, at some level, they know what it means. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا He's saying, do this and know that I'm seeing whether you do it or not. So I'm commanding you to do it, and then I'm seeing whether you do it or not. And this is not like the father who tells the son, this is the Lord of the heavens and the earth telling his creatures to do something. And, a, and an intelligent child will obey the father. If the father says, do this, the child will do it, and know that the father is going to come back and see whether he did it or not. So this first verse is the muqaddima. It's the introduction to what is coming next. And this is one of the secrets. Uh, Fakhruddin al-Razi says the greatest secret of the Quran is the relationship that one verse has with another. That's one of the secrets of the Quran because sometimes you can't see the relationship. But the relationship is very deep. So this is all an introduction to marriage because that's the foundation. That's how this whole thing started. And... It's how it continues on, and it's going to ultimately be the most important relationship in your life because it's going to determine if you have children, it's going to have in, in many ways a major impact on those children. It's going to have an impact on everybody involved, the two families involved. Marriage is deep in that the impact of marriage is very, very profound and, and moves out. It spreads out. And if you reflect on your own marriage and the coming together uh, of yourself with another uh, person and the impact that that has, the people that it impacts, and then just your own experience of life and your spouse's experience of life. So if that relationship is not sound, nothing in your life is sound. It's just not. If that's not working, then nothing is working. It's a disaster for everybody concerned. So this is the introduction of taqwa. And the last one is, is the taqwa of muraqaba, which actually you considered the highest level of taqwa, is the taqwa of muraqaba. So, and there's five levels of taqwa. And the first one is in the first ayah, taqwa rabbukum, you know, everybody ayuh nas that's taqwa shirk, that's the first level. The second level is taqwa al-kaba'ir. And that's the maqam of at-taqullah mustata'tum. Fear Allah with what you're able to fear. Everybody's able to avoid kaba'ir. That's not something that's difficult for people unless somebody's in a deep state of ghafla. If they're in real heedlessness, they'll fornicate, they'll drink, they'll do those type things. But the majority of people are able to avoid kaba'ir. That's, that's taqwa al-kaba'ir. Then taqwa al-sagha'ir. Avoiding the lesser wrongs, which this is the beginning of haqqa tuqatihi, obeying Allah as he deserves to be obeyed, you know, of, of guarding yourself uh, in a way that really is appropriate to the relationship of the abd and the sayyid. And then the fourth one is taqwa al-mubahat, which is avoiding the mubahat, uh, which are permissible things. And... That's a level of the zuhad and the ubad that 
that are worried about their hisab on Yom Qiyamah. And then the final one is taqwa khuturi masi wallah ala al-qalb. Fearing that anything other than Allah should occur to the heart, which is maqam uh, al-muraqaba really. But this one is in specific in relation to the hukuq of the rahim, that you have to have taqwa of Allah, especially in the arham, in, in your bond, kinship bonds. The, the first ones are the mother and the father, and then the uncles and the aunts, and then, you know, grandparents, grand uncles, grand aunts, and then down, looking, extending out your, bro- your older brothers in particular, older sisters, and then younger. It goes out, extends out, cousins. And then it moves out. It keeps moving out until you get to everybody because it's all from Adam and Hawa. So the, the rahm extends out. It keeps going out. But the first and most important is the mother and then the father and from there on. But that's how it works. So if, you, if you're not doing those close ones, you're certainly not going to do the far ones. right? I mean, wars are just extensions of, of domestic violence. It's just extensions of it. The, the problems began in the house. That's where all this madness began. It began. It's just extensions. That's all it is. And human conflict is all infantile behavior. It's all infantile behavior. It's people that haven't matured because it's a failure. I mean, if you use violence, it's already a capitulation. It's a failure to use something higher, which is reason. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ never sought violence. He said, let, let Don't desire to meet your enemies because it, it's a failure. And that's why he would exhaust all the possibilities before he would go that route. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam.